Welcome to Womack's Wonderful World! <laughs> I got the good story for you. I do, but I know somebody that loves chocolate more than you. Would you like to find out? Princess Chocolate by Alan Blandley. You go. Well, I like chocolate, do you? Yes. Well, I know someone who loves chocolate more than anyone in the whole world. Even you. Her name is Princess Chocolate. <laughs> Princess Chocolate loves anything chocolatey. Whenever she sees chocolate, she shouts, Yummy, 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 chocolate for my tummy. <laughs> but she always eats the vegetables, as long as they are covered in chocolate. And she always brushes her teeth with chocolate toothpaste. One day, the princess came down for her usual breakfast when she noticed something. Her bowl was empty. No chocolate cereal, no chocolate milk, no chocolate sprinkles. Where's my chocolate brekkie? Screamed the little princess. The king and queen appeared. Uh, there's a little problem, dearest. I'm afraid, darling, the larder is empty. There is no more chocolate. I want chocolate now! Princess Chocolate was very, very cross. So the king ordered the palace guards to scour the town for chocolate immediately. Boys and girls across the town were ordered to hand over their chocolate straight away. And the princess took all the chocolate and locked it away in her room. It's my chocolate, all mine, no one is allowed in here, not ever. The king and queen were very worried. Their daughter had never been this bad before. And what happens when that chocolate runs out, said the queen? What then? Suddenly, as if by magic, an old lady appeared. I can help you, said the old lady. Give me three days with your little princess, and I guarantee all your problems will disappear. Mm. The king and queen reluctantly agreed. Time for a nice little holiday, dearie, cackled the old lady. Suddenly, there was a whoosh and a whoosh and a whizzy wee and the princess and the old lady were gone. The princess reappeared with a pop in the middle of the dark, spooky forest. The old lady was there too, but she was actually a witch. <laughs> Welcome to Wendy Witch's boot camp. I'm Wendy Witch. screamed the princess. I don't want to go to boot camp. I want my chocolate. <laughs> ah, but this is no ordinary boot camp, you'll see, giggled Wendy Witch. Now follow me. It's time to perform your first task. <laughs> Wendy Witch told Princess Chocolate to be as horribly noisy as possible. Excellent, thought the princess. Being noisy was fun. Roar! Best of all, as a reward for doing so well, the princess received chocolate. Yummy, yummy, yummy! Chocolate for my tummy! Next, the witch told Princess Chocolate to get horribly muddy. Excellent, thought the princess. Getting muddy was fun. Splush, splat. And as a reward, she received more chocolates. Yummy, 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 chocolate for my tummy. Mm. And so the princess training continued. The more hurried she was, the more chocolate she received. But on the third day, something happened. She had eaten so many chocolates, 
She began to feel sick. She looked quite green. And worse, the sugary chocolates had rotted her teeth and they began to fall out. But Wendy Witch was delighted. Congratulations, you are now a fully qualified little witch. What? I'm not a witch, I'm a princess. But it was true. The princess looked just like a witch. You make a much better witch than a princess, said Wendy Witch. Princesses are loving, giving and kind. You're rude, greedy and horrid, just like a witch. As a reward, Wendy Witch gave her a book of spells and her very own flying broom. It was time for the princess to return home. She was very sad. As she flew, she began to think of all the terrible things that she had done. How she had been rude and greedy and horrid to everyone. Even her mum and dad. Tears rolled down her little green cheeks. The princess was almost home when something flew past her. Something enormous. A big slimy dragon. Oh, tasty villagers for my supper. My favourite, growled the dragon as he swooped down toward the town. The princess had to stop him. Pow! Then she remembered her book of spells. Quickly she flew to her bedroom window and read aloud a spell on page 437. There was a whoosh and a whoosh and a wizardy wee and all the chocolate vanished from her bedroom. Suddenly the town below hundreds of little people made of chocolate appeared. The townsfolk couldn't believe their eyes. The dragon swooped down into the village and immediately gobbled one up. Yummy, 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 chocolate for my tummy. Mm. The dragon munched and crunched every last one. But he ate so much chocolate, all his teeth fell out and he felt sick. He was quite green. Well, even more green. The dragon fled the town with his tail between his legs and was never seen again. Hooray! The princess has saved the day. The princess arrived at the castle when, as if by magic, her fairy godmother appeared. She looked strangely familiar. Little princess, you have finally learned the error of your ways and now truly deserve to be called a princess. The fairy godmother waved her wand and with a whoosh and a wish and a whizzy wee, Princess Chocolate returned to normal. Just then the king and queen appeared. I'm sorry for being so rude and greedy and horrid, said the princess, and they hugged for a good ten or fifteen minutes. So the princess learned to be loving, giving and kind, just like the other little princesses. And never again would she eat another chocolate, except on her birthday as a treat. Isn't that a lovely chocolatey story? Well, maybe not. Maybe next time. Um, but uh, there will be other stories. And I will see you soon um, from Womack's wonderful world. <laughs>